Hi, my name is Nalini Ramachandran. Welcome to TEDx NITK Surat Kal Salon. In India, the moment a child finishes schooling, he or she is immediately slotted into the three main streams of study for the college level, science, commerce and the arts. Those who wish to become doctors or engineers take up science. Those who pursue commerce begin working in uh, the banking or finance industries. And those who study arts become teachers, therapists, journalists, historians and so on. Now, if I were to ask you among these three streams where you would slot a storyteller, most of you would immediately tell me the arts. It makes sense, right? After all, storytelling is a very creative and artsy kind of activity and occupation. I am an author, editor and a storyteller. I have an educational background in the arts, of course. I tell stories. I tell stories about stories and storytelling. But today I'm going to talk about the bittersweet equation that storytelling shares, not with the arts, but with the sciences. Storytelling is one of the oldest tools of communication. And now when I'm saying storytelling, I don't really mean only oral storytelling, but it includes the various creative forms that storytellers have used over time to tell stories, to pass on information, to communicate and to form bonds. Obviously, over time, a lot has changed. So from paintings on the walls of caves, we've come to a point where we share stories on a Facebook wall. From having stories entrenched into the collective memories of generations and generations, we've come to a point where we can choose to share stories on social media only for 24 hours. Earlier, storytellers would travel from village to village to take their stories to the people or listeners would gather around the storyteller, as they say, around a bonfire. But today, neither the storyteller nor the audience needs to travel because all one requires is an electronic interface that can facilitate the exchange of stories and ideas. This fascinating world is what I have tried to explore in my book, Lore of the Land, Storytelling Traditions of India, which was published in 2017 by Puffin Books, Penguin Random House, India. Now, as sciences and technology advanced, storytelling has been continuously evolving. It was obvious when I began researching on the book that I would come across various perspectives, concepts, artistic forms. But what surprised me was the wealth of ancient wisdom and information that was being passed down uh, through the use of these traditions. And this wisdom obviously included the sciences. A lot many times geological phenomena were explained through stories and some of the traditions are based entirely on scientific processes. Uh, take stained glass paintings for example, religious stories but a lot of science and chemistry at work over there. But what if I told you that there is a ritualistic uh, festival in the Garhwal region of Uttarakhand that has a deep connection with the epic Ramayana but is also uh, set to the rhythm of uh, mathematical calculations. You wouldn't believe me, would you? But that's exactly what Raman is all about. It's a 10 day long festival where several communities of the region come together to celebrate it. There are several performances, acts, music, dance, masked uh, you know, performances, theatre, tableaus. What is interesting is that it has a Ramayana performance which has stories from the 18 Puranas. 18 characters are enacted using 18 different kinds of masks and the entire performance is set to 18 Tals. Now, some of you who may have studied music or dance would know that a tal is a set pattern of rhythms. It involves a number of beats and uh, steps. In Raman, there are 18 tals 
and it all comes together to make 324 beats and steps and there is a particular person who is responsible uh, to make these mathematical calculations and tell the performers when one tal is over and the next tal begins so that one act is done and the next act can begin it's interesting isn't it unfortunately it is uh, an endangered uh, tradition today and that brings me to the whole concept of how science and storytelling share a kind of strained or bitter uh, relationship. Uh, when I began speaking to storytellers, they told me that the next generation is not very keen on taking uh, the traditions forward. Uh, mostly it was because of modern ways of living or they didn't think that the tradition was high tech or new age enough or in keeping with the times. So there seems to be this gap in understanding that these traditions, even though they are ancient, actually promote scientific and technological concepts. And there also seems to be a lack of a sense of pride when it comes to cultural knowledge and heritage. So the storytellers themselves have been constantly innovating and reinventing themselves to stay relevant and keep their legacy and the heritage alive. They do understand that today's generation is uh, more used to uh, content consumption that uh, happens in a shorter span of time. So earlier when episodes or uh, acts could be performed over several nights in a month or a fortnight, now you have uh, storytellers who perform the same act uh, within say three hours or one hours uh, for an auditorium audience or even a five minute or one minute lecture demonstration. So while they do find new audiences, somewhere the essence of that particular tradition is getting a little lost. Take for example Tolu Bomalata, which is the dance of uh, the leather puppets. It comes from Andhra Pradesh. And there is a lot of science at work when it comes to the whole uh, production of that particular uh, puppet theater. So setting up the stage, making the puppets, um, deciding how translucent they should be so that the audience who sits on the other side of the screen can get to see the puppets clearly. They're colored puppets and it's not just, you know, black shadow puppetry. So they use mud lamps, these days electrical lamps, uh, lights. And these storytellers haven't really gone to formal schools, you know. They haven't really been formally educated. But they do know how physics works because they have puppets that uh, seem to look like they are moving on their own. The light uh, or the lighting is done in a, such a way that um, they know the distance that should be maintained between the screen and the lamps. There is a black cloth that is uh, kept on top to cover the entire stage area so that the light doesn't filter out. So it's very interesting that even though they are passing on cultural, religious, spiritual, uh, fictional, uh, epic kind of stories, they do use a lot of scientific principles and concepts to bring this production to life. And not many of you may know, but uh, Tolu Bomalata is actually the predecessor of television, cinema and even animation because there are a lot of special effects. Unfortunately, television, cinema, OTT platforms have kind of pushed this particular tradition and several others like Tolu Bomalata into the back seat. And what happens when an entire tradition is uh, slowly fading from people's memories? It basically means that languages, professions and even entire identities of storytelling communities are at risk. It's interesting because the very science that seems to be a foe of storytelling also happens to be a friend. And that's what I realized because many of the endangered or near extinct forms that I came across while working on the book came to me through uh, new age technology, you know, through video production, uh, photo documentation, digitization and online archives and so on. For example, in the Northeast, um, we have the Sumi Naga tribes in Nagaland and they have a particular weaving song called Ayakuzule 
which is basically the whole method of making cloth from cotton. But it's not just that, it is more than just the whole process uh, of how cloth is made. It is a um, preservation of their previous belief systems. It is about their warrior pride. It is also about the backstrap loom that they use, which is a handcrafted loom. And it's about the textile technology of this particular tribe, what their motifs mean and so on. If I hadn't seen a small video, a short video about it, I wouldn't have known about it. So technology and science have also helped preserve storytelling traditions from complete extinction in that sense. And since we are talking about lost and found in today's edition, uh, I would like to leave you with another interesting uh, storytelling tradition from Chhattisgarh which is called Gadvakam because it is practiced over there by the Gadva community. It is a metal craft and the stories are told through brass and bronze sculptures. But the process involves, once again, a lot of science, metallurgy, chemistry and so on. So you have a, a clay mold of a particular uh, sculpture over which wax noodles or strips are used to create a wax sculpture and over that you have some more coatings of clay and cow dung and rice husk and uh, once that cools down the entire mold is baked in a kiln now all of us know what happens to wax when it comes in contact with heat it melts and so the wax sculpture melts entirely after which the storyteller pours in molten metal brass bronze to create the metal sculpture and once that cools down the clay mold is broken and you have the brass or bronze sculpture right in front of you ready to tell stories now it's interesting because the wax sculpture had to be lost so that the metal sculpture could be found and that is the kind of bittersweet equation that storytelling and science share each time science and technology uh, comes up with a new um, you know uh, innovation or invention some part of storytelling traditions are lost but at the same time storytelling traditions forward or promote scientific and technological concepts and technology helps preserve storytelling as well so I'm going to come back to the question that I asked you right in the beginning. How would you slot storytelling when it comes to science and commerce and the arts? Would you still say arts? If not, then maybe we should think about how storytellers are not just artists. They are engineers, they are developers, they are architects in their own right. Even if there are no categories that they have been slotted into. And... If that is true, then how about having a new kind of inclusive curriculum so that ancient uh, technologies are not lost and at the same time cultural preservation also happens. And like I've said in my book, stories are everywhere. It's what you do with them that makes all the difference. So keep telling stories and choose the method that suits you best, art, science, commerce, whatever you like. Thank you.